So this is the last day of your life Behind the wheel you took no time to decide They'd have no reason to find The true intentions of the night Hi, I'm Fred Reed from CNY Live. Today, uh, we got a great deal going on. We're here at the Midnight Sun again. Uh, thanks again, Jim. I'll keep saying that because he needs good things. And he says, think fall, think style, think Midnight Sun. Everybody's got to be down here this weekend buying everything he's got so he can resupply for winter. Uh, now, the other reason we're here is to talk to this Magnificent band, all poets and heroes. How are you guys tonight? Good, a little wet. Good. A little wet. <laughs> well, that's Syracuse at last. Yeah. It's come upon us, the seasons. Um, uh, why don't you start off just telling us who you are and what you, not you, because we've met you before, but. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> I'm still going to interject. Okay. Well, I'm not sure that's allowed in public, sir. <laughs> so, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm Corey, I play the guitar. And I, Rob and I write a lot of music, and I help produce our records, so. Well, that's the end of it. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's the end of it. Yeah, we got <laughs> uh, I'm Rob McCall, uh, songwriter, frontman, guitarist, vocalist for All Poets and Heroes, and yeah, that's that pretty much something. You forgot resident heartthrob. <laughs> resident heartthrob. <laughs> something like that. that. We call you handsome Rob. So. Yeah, but you're beautiful Rob. First Beautiful Rob, our real estate agent Rob. Not like a Rob Mance, really. Like we do. We do have a Rob Mance. We're still working on the term. The term. <laughs> Not like Rob Mance. And obviously, you beat the skins. I beat the skins like the Olsen twins. There you go. Let's cut that. <laughs> Just tag them. Make sure you tag them. Yes. There you go. So uh, let's let let's step back a couple of years and uh, around 2015 when um, you guys originally started as a. A duel. Talk about how you got started. What, what made you guys get together and do your thing? I'll try out there. Well, I quit. I kind of like was in school and I like given up on music because all this stupid crap. And uh, I started doing this web series um, just about local musicians. The first episode was on the Spring Street Family Band. They're like a local band right here. And uh, were past tense. And um, yeah, I just would interview them, get to know them. We do a live thing in the studio, and it was just kind of a way to showcase all the talent. So I was reaching out to a lot of bands that were nominated or won Sammy's. Six Spring Street won a Sammy. His old band was nominated for one, and him and I went to high school together. It's like, oh, I'll shoot Robbie a message, see if he's down. And he said, yeah, but I'm doing a solo thing called Coffee Eyes, which is a terrible name. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a really bad name. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, we started in that, and he was like, hey, Corey, I hear, you, I hear you play music. Let's work in a song called Cloth. So we did that, and then we ended up like, like working together. We caught a whole demo, and then I kind of took him off to dinner and asked him when I started then. Yeah, kind of it was really cute. Day. It was nervous because that night I was going to ask him if he wanted to be in a band, and I'm so glad that he did it first because it was very <laughs> nerve-wracking. Yeah. Did you guys have letters all written up Go, would you like to join? I did. I had, actually did. I had a note yes, written yeah. out on my phone about like why you should make a band with me. I had, <laughs> I had like a bulleted, like, I can offer this. I was ready for this. Oh, yeah. you, had the, you had the list. I was like, because if he said no, I'd be like, all right, check this. All these points. <laughs> no, but it was, yeah, and then to be honest, it just became really organic. We just started working together. and <clears throat> had a couple members that came and went that uh, Rob got his life threatened once. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I got my life threatened once with a big guitarist, dude. He was scary. Uh, we had a couple people who were just kind of just drifting along. You know, they didn't really know what they wanted to do. And we're like, hey, cool, but we need to yeah. be a little bit more committed. We had a couple members that we really loved. Some of them, unfortunately, less down. Some of them just had to depart for other reasons. And we finally owned it on Rob and our other two members, uh, Zach Fitzgerald and Brian McGoffrey. And yeah. Now we're like a full-fledged band. So well, There you go. How did you come up with the name? Just out of curiosity. We were originally called Walden. And then uh, we, we couldn't do that. It's also just like a lot of reasons, but just a bad Google search anyways. Like how many other Walden things are going to pop up before that? We're named after the book. Yeah. Uh, so we... Uh, our, our drummer at the time dove back in <clears throat> to Henry David Thoreau's Walden and went to my favorite chapter, mm. where I lived and what I lived for, and found an excerpt that had like basically just like 15 awesome band names in it. We threw it up on Facebook. We're like, hey, 500 fans that we have right now, pick our band name, and they chose All Poets and Heroes out of that uh, excerpt from the book. Wow. So, oh, that's wow. cool. Picked by, pick by the crowd. Picked by yeah. the crowd. We, we, I was kind of pulling Wait, for it in the end. Before, but, but yeah. yeah. There was two we liked. My favorite was Colorful Longs. Not from that book, though. 
The only one not falling. Oh, the lungs, yeah. The one, the one that was in the book, I guess, is my life. <laughs> but all those here is it's stuck and it kind of worked. So you, you just mentioned your first EP there that you did in 2017. Um, obviously, like, you, this is a t- different band. Besides the two of you, this is pretty much a different band than what yeah. you did back then, uh, right? That was just two of us, and we were signed to like an indie label, and they just threw kind of formed people around yeah, we us. had just people. Kind we brought of in our own producer who taught us a lot, which went forward into our current album that, you know, there's a lot of trial and error, things we loved, things we hated, but we learned a lot that helped us moving forward. It was kind of like a yeah. blessing in disguise at the time. Not that it was a terrible experience. No, time, not at all. We were proud of it. It just it felt a lot less like us than the newer stuff, you know? Right. So, so and you, you were involved in the Next to Rock? Mm-hmm. Uh, the the ninety five bucks yeah, yeah. famous radio thing, I, we saw you guys. That was we had a great time watching you guys up there, and that was you know it was a great show. Um, how did you feel? Like did you really get something out of that that could, that made you guys better at what you're doing, or, um, or maybe more goal oriented? Orientated. I mean, I think we've always been driven to do what we feel is right. Um, I think watching some other bands who had some real professionalism around them as well mm-hmm. was motivating. And um, I think it just solidified, you know, being picked and being a, and being up against some of those bands that we had heard of or or knew about, and you know, having yeah. our songs on the radio and stuff. It was like, yeah, keep doing this. Some of them were like, the, some that were very, very just like you know, the local band, but others that were like getting to that national yeah. spotlight. We were kind of the guys that were in the middle. So to be surrounded by all that and see the best <coughs> and the worst, you know, was a good way to hone in ourselves, I guess, and kind of be honest with ourselves of where we're at. Yeah. Right. But for me, it was like keep going, you know. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. You're on a stage with these guys, and that's that's yeah. that's worthy of something. So keep yeah. going. Exactly. So um, when you guys do start writing songs, because I'm sure you got a ton of other songs and you know packed away in the closet somewhere that you're yeah. to bring up. Um, is it is it really just the two of you, or does one person start and then bring the other one you know in, or do you guys have texts that you send back and forth? <laughs> Sometimes. I think <laughs> I know. We have voice memos. We have like a Dropbox. Sometimes it's me saying piano. Sometimes him and acoustic. Sometimes it's, I mean, we've jammed just like, now that we're, like I said, it's the past what? Year? Year and a half? Almost. Almost but a like year. Now the full yeah, day. Right? Yeah, we're starting year. to write more as like a full group, which is, we still have the same. The reason I think it's worked out with the five of us is because we were very careful picking people that, like we had a very specific idea and sound that we like to hone in on. And these guys came in and letting them into like the writer's room kind of speak uh none of that like that sound didn't change it just got fuller and bigger yeah sure. so that's kind of how we knew like okay this is the right fit yeah they don't know so, it yet but we're going to take them to the next level <laughs> oh, <you are? laughs> yeah they don't know uh, they, they, we're, we're going to bring a little bit of the groove <laughs> to the beauty and it's gonna yeah, yeah but yeah it started with just rob and i and then now it's gradually growing to like a full band yeah. experience so. as far as like we don't really have a process it, it, it's, Wherever feel, wherever feels right for the song, you get ideas from wherever. I was watching a movie today, and I heard like a snippet of something gave me an idea to go on the piano and start working on something. So, so it's like spaghetti, like, throw it on a wall. And pretty much, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Might as well try it. No hurt in trying it. So, uh, you guys kind of bring me to a good point because I read your your Facebook thing, and, and when you talk about your music, it sounds like you like take really depressing things and turn them into happiness. <laughs> at the at the bottom of your like about us kind of thing on Facebook, you wrote this yeah. kind of interesting well, thing. I'm I'm not sure if it's that we take the depressing things and and make them happy. I think <clears throat> their human existence is not all bubblegum pop radio stuff, right? Like they're that's great and it has a purpose in the world. Um, that world never made that much sense to me. I was like, I don't know, man. That my world isn't that sparkly. It's not that it's not that shiny. My world is real. Very very few people. Yeah, but it's it's an escape and it's fun music. Where when we when we write music, it seems like we find beauty in the darkness. It's not necessarily that there is a happiness there. There's a reality there, and there's a comfort in knowing that there are other people going through that reality. Um, I'm not sure I'm trying to make anything sound happy. I mean, our song "Daydreams" is a is a is a more fun tune, and it's a very tongue in cheek, but it's still kind of like yeah, you're. Um, you're told to grow up and nobody wants you to be a kid anymore. Right. And it's like, oh, well, that seems dumb. I want to have fun still. And, and it's just this back and forth sort of tongue in cheek message. But that's probably like the happiest that we get is sort of that tongue in cheek right. attitude. The first thing isn't I don't see necessarily bad writing the past no. week. It's viewed as like this very taboo thing. But I mean, how many people in the United States alone 
suffering depression. Sure. So why is it such a bad topic to write about? I mean, a lot of people can relate to it, and a lot of really artistic ventures have come from people who are in that mindset. So yeah, I think that having that mentality going into writing is, and then we're obviously not the first. We will not be the last to ever do that. We just we take it. I mean, our favorite artists write from that mindset. So I think we're. Kind of yeah. ripping off of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, put a monopoly on. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Well, like, they don't know yet. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but as far yeah, as the quote, I think it's funny. Maybe is it, if it's coming off that way, I might need to check the quote. But it's. Uh, yeah. uh, I didn't quote it verbatim. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You kind of had some adjectives and verbs in there. That yeah. I, I think I know where you said it, like it says like. Yeah, no, I, I, I said blah blah blah. So I turned to happiness, hopefulness, and community. Yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, that's yeah, that. right around that line. We try, yeah. to, we, we try to at least try to give the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, there's always a candle lit in our song somewhere. So if you're struggling with the darkness, there's always a candle somewhere in there. Wait for the light. Yeah, yeah. there's always something in there for sure. So you mentioned, you know, your, you know, your, your inspirations. Who were your inspirations? Are you, you guys have the same? You got different. It's changing all the time. Yeah, I was gonna um, say. Like I said, it comes from a movie, a book, obviously other. Musicians, painters, uh, dancers at times. Um, I mean, but, I mean, starting out. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, for me, I always thought there's always like the flat ones, like why I got into music, why I started writing. Then I was like Pink Floyd, Radiohead, uh, The Who, you get classic Oasis. Yeah. Um, Suede, Pulp, a lot of Brit pop for me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but even electronic ones, like I love Boards of Canada. I really like. Uh, yeah, it'd be hard to go on. Like yeah, that. it's just like sure. I think when I met Corey, it was like he brought in this idea to me that I hadn't heard, and, and I had really never been a fan of Radiohead, yeah. and now I'm I'm a big fan, and now I'm influenced by them. Where like I, <clears throat> you had like folky ones like yeah. Matt Howard and Van so, Morrison. Yeah, we got like Red Hot Chili Peppers like almost the time. Like you know, what I mean like. True. But <laughs> one thing we heard from uh, sure. I just like you get even very uh, yeah this style guy. But um. <laughs> I forget who was saying it. I forget who was saying it to us. They said that we had that. Um, it was a really nice compliment. That's so why I'm bringing it up. Is that like he could? Was it Mark? I think or Ty? Was it Ty? He said like he'd hear all the influences, but it was never like the song sound like it was. Yeah, it wasn't. There, the was a, there was a. There was a. Like, oh, I hear yeah. the like snippet. And it's like cool. That's, or it left him almost that's wondering. Like I wonder if they got yeah. that idea from. But he said it always sounded like us, which was cool. So yeah. So Rob, the other Rob, the fabulous Rob. Oh my God, the fabulous Rob. So the fabulous Rob. So you've been with them for a year and a half, and you know now they're finally letting you, you know, in the special room. I'm just, well, it's, it's not that they didn't want me in the special room before. It's just that I had a catalog of material that I needed to own it. Yeah, he kind of came in the middle of the album, like so we already recorded like. A they really done the drums. Yeah. Shout out to Dom. Yeah, yeah Shiggy. Dom. Yeah, Shiggy. Man. So that kind of. Uh, He's a great local drummer uh, He's incredible. and music producer. He's actually the one who told us to. I'm actually interested in this question because he, he, I want to hear about Special Room and how Rob feels about it. Well, you know, we're, <laughs> we're just entering, I'm at the precipice of the Special Room. So where we are is, that, you know, they have the old EP and then they have the, the album they tracked with Dom, who then uh, told them to, to reach out to me. And now we're kind of entering the Special Room and I think it's very special. I mean, not pictured here today, not present, oh, yeah, is uh, uh, Zach and, and right. Brian. And they're they're tremendously talented in their own right. They're both songwriters. They actually front other bands. Yeah. So they bring a wealth of different influences and songwriting techniques. And uh, I I'm really excited about what 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 we can make together. And, mm. I know, yeah. Even the stuff that we've expanded upon, like that we've made our own. Like yeah. Like, we recorded right. the album and had a version of it that we were like, this is mm-hmm. cool. And then these guys came in and were like, well, what if we did this in a live setting? Yeah. And it's like yeah. we're like, whoa, that was. Also, way different have, than what we thought. We have, like, like, cool. we have electronic inputs, like some synth stuff. We have like strings. So it's like, how can you take that? And the, obviously, we can't have a freaking orchestra with us <laughs> at a show. <laughs> right. Well, not yet. Not yet. yet. <laughs> um, so it's like taking that and how to bring that and like transform it into like and do it justice without right. sounding like it's a completely different song, you know. And I know we said he wasn't on the album. But that's kind of how we stepped into the writing process. Mm-hmm. Not to speak for you, yeah, but right. Right. you know, what I mean, like we're figuring out how to write the songs and make them a live experience. And right now, that's where we're at. And we've started to write some new songs, but we'll keep those under wraps for now. Yeah, we got, we got an <laughs> album to release first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've already started writing the second one. We've already yeah. started writing the second one. Everything. Correct. So, so yeah. talk oh, directory, man. We're we're going in the right direction. Yeah. Excited. Yeah. Talk about the the single that you have out right now on Spotify. It's out on Spotify. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, that was not okay. Yeah, oh, let's yeah. talk about your mom. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
His mom? Nice. Life on Line, yeah, it was the first single. We uh, overshot ourselves. We were we really thought this was gonna be done and ready to go. And we were like, we're gonna release really a single and get this thing underway. But well, we've had more people that know a little bit more than us that came in and told us, rethink what the heck you guys are gonna do. Because we had this idea where like, this is set up. We were talking about this. Is how it went to I, went, I was gonna try to turn off the mic, but we didn't put anybody. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, okay. you left out a few special people. It wasn't People came in and told us we were dumbasses and told us how to, and they rang us in. Yeah, so. I was going to do it in a different way. I was going to get there. <laughs> That's going to be blunt, though. Skip the foreplay, man. Just jump right in. <laughs> this is an insight into the moment. Yeah, I was going to say, this goes all the time. Now we know how the song's really get written. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have a thought that you were uh, the I don't know. I was going to say that we, we, we thought we were ready to release the album. And we had uh, some friends coming in and ask us to rethink how we were doing things. But we had already kind of set the... The things in motion with life on the line, so we're like, all right, well, we're gonna release it, just see how it goes. Maybe this will be a good indication of how the album will go. And um, I mean, it's been doing well, and uh, mm-hmm. it feels like people are really starting to connect with it. And even though it was released in spring, it's like we've had this all of a sudden surge and in interest in the song, and it's been really nice. And yeah. and I think now it's a good time because uh, we are getting ready to release uh, more stuff and and really mm-hmm. hit the ground running. So it's nice too, because not to just put it on Spotify, Spotify gives you a gauge of like how things are trending and sure. tracking. And it was nice to see from like our EPs and stuff. I mean, we're not trying to shit talk every other song, obviously we love every other song. It's always nice to see an increase. We went from what, Daydreams had the most like 4,000? Mm-hmm. Now this song went up to like 12,000, you know what I mean? So to see that the new material is that much higher, right. yeah. you okay. know. It's what you want to see. It's what people want to hear it, so you know, you know there's a good yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People are connecting with it, and they're and they're they're listening to it again, and I'm just like, oh, it came up in my playlist, and that was really cool. Spotify gives you like a nice gauge that tells us like people are saving it, and like the numbers are going over it off of this song, so yeah. And that's and and now we feel like wow, we have an album's worth of this material. Mm-hmm. We can't wait to get the rest of it out. So you got some shows coming up. Yeah. This weekend coming up, we'll go ahead with, with uh, Funk, Funk and Waffles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Friday night, uh, show doors are at 8, show starts at 9. We're with a uh, touring band, or a band from out of town, uh, Honey Tent. From Brooklyn. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fun show. Uh, they have a good energy, and then, you know, hopefully it will be sticking around for us too, and we're just ready to have a good, have a good night, and hopefully create a vibe and an atmosphere, and just... And just ride it out and just have a good time. And it's gonna be cool. They're a little bit more like almost like both pack at times. Yeah, they got some cool things. Both pack is they're like this like kind of internet sensation jam band, but they're really cool. And these guys kind of yeah. <laughs> yeah, they didn't just sell. Yeah, they, they didn't just sell, <laughs> man. It's <laughs> very good. To, so, to this uh, point, we're well, in the 21st century, and I think they did uh, right they started out. find a lot yeah, of their, okay. their followers from. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, they're kind of in that same vein. Shout out to Melissa Gardner. Yeah, yeah she's uh, local, local trombonist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's been friends with them for a while. She's yeah. a really good trombonist. She's just an amazing musician all around. Um, yeah, she got to play with them a few times, and she played with them at Madison Square. So. Yeah, which is nuts. Rep in Syracuse. Yeah, there you go. go. This is our yeah. 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 <laughs> corporation. <Rep in> Syracuse. <laughs> yeah, but I'm really excited. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun night. Also, we're gonna have some people filming the night there too. So, oh, we'll try okay. to pack it out and throw a party and film oh. the night and. Yeah, go ho 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 ho, guys. So tell everybody we're playing with Wolfpack. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to hear first, folks. Yeah, we're definitely we'll, looking forward to it. We'll stay a correction later on after the yeah, show. Voice um, <laughs> secret show. <laughs> Funk Waffles, Wolfpack. <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, who you're working with and producing this the, the EP coming out and, and who's helping you do it? Or? Yeah, we have a, oh, the LP, yeah. We have a lot of help. So we, we shouted out uh, Dom Shigatana, who was on the record. He drummed for us. Drummed for us on the record. Uh, Jeremy Johnston engineered it. Uh, Brian Brian Madoffery lent us his house as his studio, basically. Um, but Corey was really the producer. And Corey and... and we shot off each other. Yeah, but Corey took the lead on this one. And it was a really cool thing. He just knew what the space needed. And like he said, he, he learned that from working with a producer beforehand, but he really was able to put in his... books, too. <laughs> and read a lot of books, yeah. He, yeah, so Corey was really the producer. I mean, I was there to be sort of the sounding board and to interject some ideas, but Corey really took the lead on this one. And um, we've had some help. Uh, our friend Mark uh, is going to be mixing it and mastering it, and he used to work down at Red Bull Studios, so that's going to be cool to have his ear on it. And um, Jeremy helped a lot, too, because Jeremy Johnson... Formerly of Subcast Studios. Shout out. Love you, Jeremy. 
he uh, he kind of just took us. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he kind of took us sort of around a lot of different spots. And like one of the last places we played was was it the Nelson Nelson Odeon. Nelson Odeon. It's like this like looks like an old like Western church, but it was like a venue. It, it's, and we, yeah, it's a renovation. Yeah, yeah. It's we just cool. we recorded right there, and he ruled it up and. We recorded like one little like drum track and like we like alternated. We did some guitar stuff. We recorded French horn there. Yeah, just like so much natural reverb and just cool mm-hmm. tones. Then we recorded at Brian's house with this old nineteen fifties like flat. And then we recorded at Jeremy's house on this like lake oh. in the middle of the woods. Which is I really wanted to cool. live there. <laughs> um, I wanted to record the whole. Album. So yeah, he kind of yeah. took us and he even said to us in the beginning, he's like, "How about instead of like first of all studios cost money, but also like it gets you like this cool creative mindset of always switching spaces, not yeah. just." So now you're actually going in the studio, just thinking like I just gotta get this track recorded. Now we're getting creative all around. Like I think the seasons also helped. This took us ten yeah. months of just ten recording. Months. So we went from spring to winter. So we saw everything. We saw everything. Um, so that was interesting too. But I think the cool thing too is we did a lot of studio work and other acts, not just our bands. And it was <coughs> it was not this time around. It wasn't so much trying to pluck out the notes to the click track and get it recorded. You know what I mean? Because like there's no emotion. But a lot of people I think go in the studio thinking. Click track. All right, just play the thing. Then we got it. We get it. Okay, good. Next thing. Right. That's not how we did it. Like, it was, Jeremy's like this very relaxing presence. He's, he's like, like, okay, yeah. yeah he's so like chat, but I think. Um, and if you need a minute, more. he's cool to just like, yeah, I'm gonna go get some yeah. coffee and you do your thing. And and let me know really, you're ready. Like, he's. <laughs> and there's a lot of like, we did a lot of pre production, like a lot, months of pre production. And even still in the studio, we were still doing a lot of experimentation, which is cool. But I think it was a good lesson learned too that like, it really kicked us in the ass saying, like, Pre-production is such a big part yeah. of no one knows you what you're going in. Yeah. So it was a very cool. Well, and then also awesome. pressure pressures off monetarily. You're you're spending a quarter of what you mm-hmm. would in in yeah. it. I mean, the rooms right. are amazing, but you have that pressure of like that hour we just spent. Because I remember there was a day Corey, Jeremy, and I kind of left, and Corey's like, "I have this idea. You got to give me time." And we're like, "Done, cool." We came back. Corey had this amazing idea. He had these layered guitar parts. This is from Monument. Oh. He had these amazing layered guitar parts that he had worked out, but it was like an hour. And now instead of sitting there like, wow, that hour was $150 of our time. You don't feel that pressure. You're glad Corey took the time to do that because had he not had that time in that environment, in that space, we'd lose that part entirely. Because I'm sitting there like with my checkbook like, <laughs> And there's not interns coming and going, other acts. It was very much like we were in our own little like... Yeah, also we've had that too where interns pop in. Can I write yeah. something? No! <laughs> Get it out! <laughs> really? Yes. Well, I mean, yeah, we, 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 we did this we, totally yeah, 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 totally yeah, independent, independent too, which is nice. Trendy. Yeah. So there's no one button and no heads. There's no voice in the room louder than our own, which is really nice as the creators. Sometimes a little scary because we're like, where the hell do we go with this song? There's a couple songs where like, we had no idea. That's what I'm saying. There's one song I took and it was Rob's. And like, I did a lot of like this like atmospheric, electric, electronic, like drum beat and guitar ambient stuff. And Rob this week put this like, string thing and that springboard me to this percussive thing and like yeah. you know what I mean so it, it, was kept, good, it was cool to build off each other yeah, yeah. I was just yeah I just can't wait until uh, you get to do the second <laughs> yeah dude I know <laughs> and see your the point being it was like it was a very good learning experience, experience. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's gonna be good the it's album uh, the album's not perfect right I mean no one's freaking perfect so I think we right. want that to embody yeah, us we all were perfect we didn't nothing to write songs about awesome. yeah there you go <laughs> so uh, you guys are assuming maybe February or March for another, another single, not yeah, the single. Oh, the the album single. we're holding on to tight right now, but we are will have content coming out mm. in February, sure, for sure. Okay, uh, we just haven't picked a date, but it'll probably be early February. We have a good um, plan in motion. Once February comes, I think I will start to see like. Okay, uh, well, though, yeah, you're gonna yeah. start to see hints of things. Yeah. Hopefully, late December, we'll start early January. January. You're, you're gonna start. Yeah. You're gonna have to follow along. <laughs> you're gonna start seeing things, and you might be a little. There'd be weird symbols on CMY Live every so Exactly, yeah. 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 A month later, you'd be like, did you put them together yet? Yeah, that's very radio. <laughs> just well, we joined the free Get a bear up randomly. Interrupts the freebies. We now interrupt your program. Um, yeah, no, we're excited. You'll have to follow along, though, and you'll see some progressions and and hopefully some other cool content for people to follow along with until then to tide them over. It's cool. Cool. You guys are missing out. You just don't even know. Come see, yeah. it come see it live. Come see it live. Also, yeah, you're going to see a lot of those new oh, songs. You can live. listen to these songs. It's a good point. Yeah, come Friday, <laughs> you, you can hear, hear it live. Yeah, yeah, you can. Actually, spoil it. There is no album. There is no album. There's no album. There's no album. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely come Friday. Good point. What? I like to come. You see him live. On Friday. Oh, you don't need to. Who made it? I don't know. All right. It was a collective thing. It was an emergent property. That see, this is how we write songs. <laughs> <laughs>
See, he's getting through the door now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, he's in, baby. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> what you guys doing? Well, I think we beat that one up. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So I want to thank you guys for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having us. I'm excited about it. I loved what I have heard so far from what yeah. you, you know, meagerly let, let us hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, everybody should, you know, look it up on Spotify. Just follow them. It's a great band. It's a Syracuse original. Let's keep it rolling. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Us. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jim. Yeah.